Welcome to the Libertarian Counterpoint. You've heard their point. Now, here's the counterpoint. Your host today is Richard Fields. Welcome to the Libertarian Counterpoint. I'm Richard Fields on the show today. Carla Howell and John Cameron. Uh, Carla, you have been on the show before with your music video. Tell us a little bit more about the music video and where people can get it and what it's all about. Sure. I've been releasing libertarian songs. Hey, the libertarian movement needs music. I'm working on some other videos, but I have one video out called Good Folks. It's about gun rights and it's designed to persuade people who are not already in favor of the Second Amendment to move them in that direction, help them understand why it's important. So please share it on your social media, share it with your friends, get them talking about it, get a conversation going about the, going about the second amendment and hopefully we will move people closer so we have a larger body of voters out there who say no we shouldn't be messing with people's guns they have the right to self-defense the narrative a year ago or a little bit more the wuhan virus was that it was a, a total conspiracy theory to call it a, a leak from the wuhan uh, lab uh, i think uh, trump was tried to push that a little bit and a few other a few others uh, did, but nobody, nobody with knowledge, nobody with, no serious people would take it seriously. Now the serious people are taking it very seriously. What's changed? I don't think anything's changed. I, I think that I talk to a lot of physicians on a pretty regular basis in passing. And unfortunately, since my brain still thinks it's 18 and my body is not, quite often professional reasons. The only ones that towed the line about this being a, a natural jump from animal to human or people who are in public health or high up in the government monopoly health systems like the HMOs and stuff like that. All the individual docs that I talked to who were willing to speak honestly said that this thing's uh, engineered and anybody who says it isn't is a liar. That, I think, you know, has been... A lot of reasoned people have thought that from the beginning. I don't. I haven't really thought through why. Who is served by having it be an an accident, other than the fact that so many people want to appease the Chinese and are afraid of them, Chinese Party. I think now more and more stuff is coming out that we have apparently actually funded. Well, Dr. Fauci is a big fan of gain and function research, and he actually uh, got it funded at the Wuhan lab. So I, I understand why. Now it's coming. Now I'm now I'm starting to figure out why this is going on. Yeah, but I I think more and more people are coming around, and as more and more stuff comes about up about Fauci, if if we ever got if we could ever get good information out of China, if anybody could get good information out of China instead of being stonewalled, you know, I think they could probably figure out where it came from in about a week. But that's never going to happen. Just like we're never going to get uh, good numbers about COVID uh, dying with and dying from. There's a huge difference there. You know, dying from COVID is means that COVID is a primary uh, killer when somebody dies, and dying with COVID means that you've uh, been tested and uh, and uh, you have the COVID virus, but uh, you know your tumor killed you or whatever. So uh, anyway, I know I'm talking myself in circles, but I don't think anything has changed other than uh, the overwhelming. Uh, need for people to try to get to the bottom of at least part of this panic demic that's been going on. And the truth will out eventually everywhere. The truth will out. Let's hope. Um, I, I think that um, it points to the need to separate science from government. Um, and that includes not only should Fauci be fired, even if he was totally honest and upfront and had perfect integrity. No one human being should be guiding science through a pandemic. It's everything benefits from a free market with many voices competing for the truth. Actually, you know, actually trying to be the ones to discover the truth, not some mm -hmm. political agenda. And so we need to get rid of the who, get out of the who. Uh, we need to completely dismantle the CDC. It's not needed. It's proven to be an actual danger, something that actually makes pandemics worse. They should therefore be fired. We don't need to replace them. We need a free market. And while we're at it, we should get rid of the FDA, which is which has held up testing, held up vaccines, but especially testing in the beginning, which was a huge error. These agencies need to be dismantled so that the free market, which is very flexible, has the benefit of millions of minds around the world advancing the truth and therefore advancing our health. Mm -hmm. And this is going to make us manage pandemics far more effectively. 
And if we get rid of the FDA, it means drug prices will come way down. We'll have way, we'll have way more drugs on the market, giving many people many more choices to mitigate disease, stop pain, save their lives, mm -hmm. and save people a ton of money that they're now spending on health care. Gosh, right. get rid of the FDC, the or FDA, the CDC. Tell us what you really think, Carla. What's that? Yep. I'm sorry. <laughs> Tell, tell us what you really think. Uh, I, well, I, I, I think there's a simple explanation. I think what you why. think. I think what you think is what I think. <laughs> I think there's a, an even simpler explanation to the whole uh, change in attitude toward the uh, origin of the virus being uh, wet markets versus uh, a lab. I think that the, the, the primary reason was, and believe me, I am no fan of Trump. Anybody who has watched even a scintilla of the uh, episodes of this show in the last uh, five, six years knows that. But I think that since Donald Trump said this is a lab a virus, this is a, a lab leak, that was uh, a, a, a golden opportunity for the left to say, ha, we can, have, we can point to Donald Trump as a science denier. We will get on board. We will 100% say that it's a conspiracy theory that the president has bought into, and we will be able to defeat him in the polls in uh, November, which is exactly what happened. Uh, now that the now that the goal has been accomplished, the people who think and the people who are influencers and the people who have uh, uh, serious uh, credentials, etc., and, and so on, now they can say, "Okay, maybe maybe we made a mistake. It's long past the election. People will forget how much we branded uh, the the lab theory as a conspiracy theory." Let's take another look at the evidence because, in fact, we, you know we are in fact uh, interested in science, and now that the science is on our side or is not going to harm us, we'll, we will uh, give serious credence to the idea that, that the whole thing started in a lab. I have no idea where the, where the virus came from. I, I suspect, just, you know, just suspect that it happened naturally, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know anybody that does know. Well, maybe somebody knows. Somebody in the lab may know. But wh wherever it came from, however you want to count the deaths, 99% of the people who had uh, coronavirus survived. Only 1% died and those all had, almost all, had serious comorbidities. They were dying of something else anyway. So the, the whole the whole pandemic, as John likes to call it, is uh, a, 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 an exercise in mass delusion and mass panic, ma ma massive uh, nonsense. And now that it's over and now that it has served its purpose, hey, we can change the, we can change the narrative. Nobody will remember. Yeah, I, it's it's amazing how uh, yeah that I hate to say that's the simple explanation and probably was Occam's razor razor usually the most obvious and the most simple explanation is the right one. Uh, I you know I'm not a big believer in in conspiracy. Um, I don't think there's central planning to this the anti-Trump conspiracy that we witnessed over. Uh, I think it's just conspiracy of of. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people on the right that didn't like him. People on the left despised him, and and uh, and and I think I think if you could administer sodium pentothal, unfortunately, I don't like the guy either. So hopefully, I don't sound like a Trump defender here because he's he's an idiot on trade, and and he's just more of the same stuff. But um, you know, if you could administer sodium pentothal to any of the the power brokers from the deep state, or especially in the Democratic Party. And ask them how many points would uh, Trump have won the presidential election by if it weren't for COVID? Uh, what would the the overwhelming what would the number of the overwhelming majority of Republicans in the Senate and the Demo and the uh, and the House of Representatives be if it wasn't for COVID? And they would tell you the truth. I mean, they the despite the complete control of the the lamestream media and a huge a huge panic demic. And I call it pandemic because the things that were put in place to fight this horror that isn't really much of a horror are much worse than than the horror itself. Despite all of that, the the uh, the folks that call themselves Democrats barely won. So, um, you know, that's that's the, that's the frightening thing. Did you know what? Was it a, a was it a conscious conspiracy directed by you know a head of conspiracy? No, I think it's just. Everybody jumps on board. Um, well, the media was even uh, reporting this. I think that you were hearing commentary about that, you know, the pandemic was the best thing that ever happened to Biden kind of things. Mm 
Mm. So I think it was kind of understood mm. that Democrats saw the pandemic and certainly the rhetoric reflected that, that they were mm. after Trump big time and using it every way they could, mm. which is what they all do. They use everything they can to knock down the other team uh, when it when their own elections at stake. Um, as long as there's no libertarian seriously threatening, then they might unite and, and uh, make sure to knock us out of the way. But yeah, I think they, I agree that their motive, uh, well, you're saying you don't know what their motive was. I'm saying, I think to some degree, it's obvious that, I mean, this is a, a pattern you see every time before elections. Admissions come out after the election. Yeah, it's the, it's the don't let a good crisis go to waste mentality. And that's... Mm -hmm. uh, been demonstrated uh, in the results. Is that Rahm Emanuel who said that? Yeah, Rahm Emanuel, uh, mayor of Chicago, a member of the Clinton administration. Yeah, anyway, there, there goes uh, a, a moral uh, compass for you. Yeah. Go the opposite direction if you're going to be yeah. moral. Yeah. Uh, the uh, economy was in rough shape or in dangerous shape, let's put it that way, uh, toward the end of 2019. And the, the lockdowns, not the pandemic, but the lockdowns sent us into uh, what's supposedly what looks like a short-lived short recession. But when the lockdowns went into effect, the Federal Reserve went into overdrive, into super overdrive, uh, printing up more money in the last uh, year or so than has been printed up, uh, I think a, a third or something like that, of all the money that's been printed. I think it was 25% of, of all, all the money that's been printed since the Federal Reserve Act was enacted in 2013. So Right there. Uh, so anyway, and that that happened under both Clinton, or excuse me, under both uh, Trump and uh, with on steroids now under Biden. Uh, so you can't say that uh, either Trump or Biden uh, has uh, any uh, uh, clean hands when it comes to the money printing that's going on. And now we're seeing five percent consumer price inflation. What a surprise! You balloon the supply of money. You cut off the supply of goods by. Uh, lockdowns and then you get inflation. Who would have Who would have thought? Yeah, I got a no, it's, it's it's Go insane. Ahead, yeah. It's absolutely insane. And uh, yes, this is the price. And I like to point out that you know when people say uh, we're we're sticking a debt to future de generations, which we are, but I think people underestimate the current impact of printing money and deficit spending and overspending. We've had inflation throughout our lives. And now we're seeing a boost in it. There's, we never know when things are going to do exactly, how it's exactly going to play out when. But no one can deny it's a dangerous situation when you have this much fiscal recklessness going on. Mm -hmm. And inflation is the immediate. Uh, I mean, they've already said that in the last four or five months, the standard people's wage increases have not kept up with inflation. So standard of living is already going down because of the reckless spending over this pandemic and now Biden carrying it on. And I don't think we should ignore the uh, infrastructure bills and all these, you know, different well, can machinations. We, can as you not call it the infrastructure bill because it's just a pork barrel bill. I wish I, I it think, is. It's, yeah, I think it's just total, calling it that does a disservice to, to people, but I'm sorry to interrupt. Carla. Well, I, I think apologize. one thing we need to point out is that the constitution does not arise, authorize spending on highways not to mention all these other things that are supposedly infrastructure. Uh, and the Democrat, the Republicans who are buying into this, we need to address them and criticize them, not just the Democrats, because it this is not a federal function to be building roads or any other form of infrastructure. It's the states have the authority to do it, but they shouldn't be doing it in a lot of cases either. Certainly, certainly anything beyond very basic roads or transportation. Forget it. it and, you know, this and all these other excuses for slapping, slapping bills out there with trillion dollar price tags is, is just sickeningly out of control. What we need to do is not only criticize it, but propose to cut spending by a minimum of 25 percent, if not 50 or 75 percent. Let's talk about the opposite. Let's go on the offensive and talk about cutting government spending which is critical. And this will lead us towards ending the federal income tax eventually, not immediately because we've got too many big bills, but we can move in that direction. And, and above all, we can stabilize a dollar, which will remove this invisible tax of inflation. Yeah, it was Doug Casey, I think, that said, uh, if, uh, if uh, taxation is theft, it's theft by 
uh, by use of force. Inflation, on the other hand, is theft by use of fraud. And that's exactly what it is. When you, when you look at inflation, uh, the standard historical, uh, tr traditional uh, definition of inflation is simply an increase in the supply of, of, uh, of money. That's been changed by modern economists to uh, be uh, the, an increase in the price level. Well, that's uh, an effect. It's not the cause. The effect is an increase in price level. And the effect can be in the price level of any number of things. For the last, uh, up, until, uh, up until this year, most of the inflation took place in the stock market, in the bond market. So everybody was happy because their 401ks were going up. Uh, but now the inflation is hitting consumer prices. Check the prices of lumber or houses or uh, groceries lately. It's now hitting, hitting the uh, average Joe's uh, pocketbook uh, in, a, in a big way, 5% in the latest uh, CP uh, consumer price index uh, uh, estimation. And that is, is a fraud. The CPI is a fraud because they use things like hedonics to tell you that if steak goes up, then you should be eating, then you're probably going to eat the hamburger. And if you're, you know, if your cell phone is better than a brick, then it's uh, actually cheaper than it was when you bought a brick back in the back in the early '90s. It's it's uh, it's it's totally subject to political ma manipulation. It's not very long before we hear politicians, both Democrats and Republicans, blame the producers, blame merchants, blame everybody except themselves for inflation. They'll say, okay, we need to have price controls. We need to have wage controls. Price controls uh, for, from the Democrats, wage controls from the Republicans, because we got to get this uh, inflation under control. Mm -hmm. The only way to get inflation under control is to get money growth under control. We, if money growth was under control, if we had a gold standard or a, uh, a, a monetary standard that did not automatically increase the, the quantity of money at every hiccup in the economy, we would have a gradual deflation, which is a good thing. Gradual deflation would be the gradual decrease in the cost of living that would be uh, fueled by uh, by productivity increases on the part of the of workers and by uh, by technology uh, making the price of things go down. You see that in in the Apple iPhone and so forth. Mm -hmm. So inflation should not exist in a modern day economy. We should have gradual deflation and uh, anything anything that's other than gradual deflation is malpractice and thievery on the part of government. I have a question. Was that was that 5%, was that in the month of May or that was at a 5% annualized rate? Uh, annualized rate, I believe. Okay. All right. So uh, I, I want to add, add a point to what both of you are saying. I absolutely agree with you, Carla, that the, the government is, has taken power and is doing things that it doesn't need to do. And everything the government does, I always use the analogy on a project that a, the, an elephant is a mouse built to government specs because you can't, you can't hand out enough graft. Uh, if it's a, a small tight project, you have to have massive amounts of money to, to pay for the friends that kept you in office and pay for the unions and all the rest of that stuff. But the, the Democrats over and over again, claim they're the party of, they, they follow the science. So why aren't they following the science and the history of money? And in nowhere in the history of the world, anywhere, any country, any time from the dawn of man has a civilization that relied on fiat currency survived. And when, when uh, money printing starts going in earnest, there is a, almost always an imminent collapse of that civilization. Now, we have this going on now. But instead of focusing on that crisis, which is a real crisis, we're focusing on the climate crisis, which is looking at a 1% rise in temperature over 50 years, which will make uh, more of the planet habitable and maybe sea levels rise a little bit. And the standard of living during that time will go up exponentially. They're calling that a crisis to take control of the economy, but not looking at the science of money, which says that once you start the printing presses running 24-7, that there is a pretty imminent collapse of fiat currency. And I want to know why nobody calls them on that. That's well, it's because saying. science is only important if it serves your political agenda. Uh -huh. And that goes for both Democrats and Republicans. Uh, and speaking of, of, uh, of uh, manipulation of the economy, it's not enough 
<clears throat> the politicians are manipulating the the money supply. They're not trying to manipulate the how decisions are made in the in the uh, industrial workplace. It's called industrial policy. There's a, bu a bill that's passed the Senate that would put in place industrial policy. In other words, picking winners and losers, similar to what what happened uh, in Britain during the I think it was the 50s, post World War uh, II, uh, which drove Britain's economy into the ground. Now, Republicans and Democrats are voting in favor of doing that. Industrial policy, uh, expound on that, if you will. Yeah. Me uh, you're talking to Carla. Whoever jumps in first. I will. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, Chuck Schumer is a crony capitalist. He is the guy pushing this. He's a Democrat. He's the head of the Senate. And he is a crony capitalist. Not only... Socialist. He's also a socialist, all those other, but he's a crony capitalist, okay, because that's not what that's not what he's blamed for. But let's make sure everyone understands. Schumer is a crony capitalist, and he's throwing money in an industry that doesn't need it, and that is, in the long run, going to get hurt by it. I worked for a company in the 80s, a high-tech company, that was running after, after all the defense spending generated by Reagan's buildup, and the, com the com company I worked for, Computer Vision, eventually folded. And having been there on the inside watching it crumble, I can tell you it's a direct result of them chasing government welfare dollars. It, it, it was very much like a, a welfare family that gets destroyed by taking endless handouts and becoming dependent on government. They became so dependent on these handouts that they lost their competitive edge and they went out of business in the 1990s. Uh, this is not going to help our semiconductor industry. Uh, what they need is to be left alone to compete in a very competitive worldwide market. We still have 45% of the market. China only has 5% of it. Are you kidding me? That is insane to say that they have to be subsidized. It's just going to do more damage. One of the things, this is kind of going off in a different direction. One of the things that has always uh, amazed me is that uh, in Congress, there's something called the Black Congressional Caucus. It's one of one of many caucuses. The Tea Party is a caucus, mm -hmm. but the Black Congressional Caucus is uh, mostly Democrats. Uh, in fact, maybe well, maybe there's one Republican, but the most the most recent Republican that wants to join, because he's a black guy, he wants to join the Black Caucus, is uh, Representative Byron Donalds from Florida. He's being ignored. Anybody know why? Well, I, I'm, I'll jump in on this one, Carla, because you took a breath, so I jumped in. Okay. Um, and Richard was asking the question, so he couldn't ask the question and answer it at the same time. Well, I could, but, but I'm giving you a chance. <laughs> so he's the 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 uh, Black Congressional uh, Caucus. Uh, I I don't I don't. Is there a White Congressional Caucus? <laughs> no, that would be, be, be considered racist. That would be racist. Shame on you for even bringing it up. Uh, is there a Hispanic Congressional Caucus? Oh, no. It's probably a women's caucus, but there can't be a man's caucus. No, 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 no. No, but there can be a squad. You can be, you can have a squad. Um, anyway, so the the obvious reason is that uh, he's not towing the party line. The party line is that um, you know black people uh, can only be helped by uh, central controlled policies. They can only be helped by by dollars that come to them. Through government programs, and and those those the government programs have to either take or or print money, and then it has to pass through pass through politicians and spread out through uh, union manned government organizations, uh, and be led by people with multiple uh, degrees beyond baccalaureate uh, that um, have their cushy jobs, and then filter down through once. It, through massive layers of bureaucracy to where two cents on the dollar ends up uh, where where it's supposed to be, supposed to be, yeah, air quotes, those are air quotes, uh, where, where the, the, it's, it's a scam. Uh, and anybody that, that doesn't want to tow the socialist party central planning line, uh, it, it doesn't matter if you're black. If you're not towing that line, then they don't want you there. You know, if somebody suggests that the that the best way to uh, to help black people is to uh, lessen government regulation, which if you ask most people, you know, what their barrier to pulling themselves up out of the ghetto is, they'll they won't tell you it's 
the man keeping them down, well, they'll tell you it's regulation. They can't start a, a mechanic shop in their backyard or they'll be re regulated to death. They, they can't braid hair because they need to go to a beauty school for 800 hours and pass a test. They can't do this. They can't do that. They can't do the other thing because of regulation. And who favors regulation? Democrats. Who favors, used to favor deregulation? Republicans. I mean, Goldwater Republicans favor it. And one of the things that uh, the guy none of us like did very well was he moved a whole bunch of regulators having to do with at least farming out of D.C. and moved them out to the Midwest where, where the farmers are. And he started to remove layer after layer after layer of, of regulation. And, and it, you know, it had an effect. So if, if you're not toeing the party line, it doesn't matter what the color of your skin is, they're not going to let you in the club. It's that simple. I think in addition to deregulating, we need to end the war on drugs because that is something that has directly hurt a lot of people yeah. of color. But I'd like to give a shout out to Senator Tim Scott, a Republican who said the United States is not a racist country. <gasps> oh, my God. The, the, the Black Caucus must have hated hearing that. And not to mm -hmm. mention all the other people who use race for particular agendas, which always involve expanding government in some way. And, you know, not only do we have to say this is nonsense because race, racism, the bulk of racism in this country is directly now propagated by government. It is not a natural human phenomenon. People want to get along with their fellow man and woman and in, as their fundamental nature. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think not only do we have to just say nonsense to this all, but I think we should really consider eliminating the paid staff of all congressmen and senators. Now, if they didn't have, you know, 25 to 200, I think Ted Kennedy at one point had some, he had some ungodly number of staff people, both in DC and in Massachusetts, hmm. coming to out female? stupid ideas. Okay. Hmm. I, I, I need to correct, caucuses, need to they wouldn't have time to caucus and they wouldn't have time to write 2000. They wouldn't be able to write 2000 page bills. We need, we, need to, we need to correct the historical record before we run out of time. Racism has always been a governmentally imposed uh, institution, going back to uh, slavery, to Jim Crow, to segregation, to uh, housing uh, zoning laws that keep blacks out of certain neighborhoods. It's always been a government thing. Uh, and Very individuals, right. not so much. Yeah. Uh, and, I think we're running out of time here. So capital, like thank you. capital is colorblind. Capitalists are colorblind and capital is colorblind. Let's put the power back in the hand of capitalist and capital and racism will go away. It, gradually, but yeah, it'll go away as long as people are free to choose who they want to associate with, how they want to associate with them, who they want to trade with, and uh, be able to do so in a free market, in a free uh, social environment, being able to work with and cooperate with everybody. Thank you very much. That's the show. We'll see you again next week. Thank you for watching The Libertarian Counterpoint. Listen each week in Sacramento on Comcast Channel 17 for Knuckleheads of Liberty on Monday at 5.30 p.m. and The Libertarian Counterpoint show on Thursday at 8 p.m.